welcome to Strictly Sex. I'm Dr. Drew, and as a practicing physician, assistant clinical professor of psychiatry at the University of Southern California School of Medicine, and as a radio host, I think I've heard it all. For about 20 years, I've been listening to people and helping them find answers to questions about sexual health, addictions, and relationships. And that is what Strictly Sex is all about. In tonight's show, we're going to talk about sperm. We've heard tales of couples getting pregnant without vaginal penetration. Could this really happen? And how do sperm function? And what is it about that one particular sperm that's strong enough to fertilize an egg? Andrologist and fertility specialist Dr. Lawrence Worlin shares some little-known facts about sperm. In a single ejaculation, a healthy male will discharge an average of 180 million sperm all with one biologically programmed purpose. Basically, the sperm function is, in fact, to penetrate an egg. But how much of what we know about sperm is fact or fiction? Dr. Lawrence Worland, founder of the Coastal Fertility Center in Irvine, California, makes a living studying the habits of sperm. It's a fact that it takes an egg and a sperm to create an embryo. But it's also a fact that the two are not created equally. Sperm run a life cycle of about 74 days with another 20 days or so to come out through the ducts. So every 90 days, sperm change. And though nature is programmed so that the healthiest sperm penetrates, it's fiction that the fastest wins. How does that affect the X's and the Y's? Or the chromosomes in sperm that determine gender? Male sperm swim faster, get to the point more quickly, but die more quickly, whereas female sperm swim more slowly, uh, and when they get to the point, live longer. It sounds like fiction, but can a couple increase the odds of controlling their baby's sex? If you were trying to time for a male, you would like to have intercourse as close to the time of ovulation as possible so that theoretically the first sperm that get there would be the male sperm. Whereas if you're trying to have a female, you'd more likely want to have intercourse before ovulation so that the male sperm get there, die off, and the sperm that are there waiting to uh, fertilize the egg are the female sperm. Though it's true that except in a lab, sperm can survive only a few hours outside the body. Inside the body, it's a different story. The sperm can uh, live for um, anywhere from hours to days in the human body. Uh, and certainly after ejaculation, what tends to occur is that uh, the sperm can get trapped in the crypts of the cervix that then periodically get released into uh, uh, back into uh, the uterine cavity and can eventually get up into the uh, fallopian tube and meet the egg. And because it's a fact that ejaculation occurs in two stages, that makes the withdrawal method of birth control ineffective. Normally, there's an initial spurt of just a drop or two that has about 90% of the sperm. And then all the rest of the fluid that comes out is seminal fluid. So the reality is, is that if that spurt were enough to get into the uh, vaginal vault and get up and into the cervix, then there is a strong likelihood that you could achieve a pregnancy. Smoking, drugs, and drinking all can lower sperm count. While it sounds like fiction, it's actually a fact that sperm are sensitive to high temperatures. They're effectively frying those little guys and therefore they're, they lose their motility, they lose their ability to move, they lose their ability to penetrate. So unfortunately, yes, things like jacuzzis, hot tubs, saunas, steams, absolutely no question it can affect the sperm. 